Okay, we have here today the integral from zero to two pi sine to the 25th x sine 17 x dx. And there was a really interesting suggestion in the comments when I did this problem recently to do this using the complex method. Over here to the right, we've got our complex definition of sine x. This is really easily derived from Euler's formula. And what we're gonna do is, in order to simplify this, kind of to save some writing, we're gonna create something we're just going to call z equal to e i x. And so that way, 1 over z is going to be the same thing as e minus i x. And so basically what we're going to do is just kind of plug into our integral and simplify it with this. We can rewrite our definition of sine this way. We can write it a little different and bring like the 1 over 2 i in front. And then, and then this is just going to become z minus 1 over z. And while we're at it for sine 17x, just to make it clear what's happening, for sine 17x, using this definition, it's just going to be e i 17x minus e minus i 17x. But to put it in this form over here, like e i 17x with exponent properties, I can write that as e i x to the 17, but that's going to be just the same thing as z to the 17. So for this, rewriting it, We'll just have this as z to the 17 minus 1 over z to the 17. And actually, let me make some space because we want this 2i out front. So we'll write it like this. And so what we can do is just use these definitions to the right. We're putting it into the complex definition, but then we're using this z for shorthand. So how it's going to work is we've got our integral from 0 to 2 pi. Then first, sine to the 25th, we need to take the 25th power on this. So it's going to be 1 over 2i to the 25th. Then this piece to the 25th, so z minus 1 over z to the 25th. And then here we can just plug in this right here. So we're going to have another 1 over 2i times this stuff. So then from here, these two are constants, and we can put them together. They're exactly the same. So writing that, we can bring that up front of the integral as... 1 over 2i to the 26th power, and then just rewriting the rest of this stuff. And then from here, of course, we don't want to multiply this all the way out, but we can use binomial expansion on this piece right here. But before we do that, the thing to recognize about this, just kind of imagining we expand it all out, we multiply it out, we get a ton of terms, I don't know, I guess like 50 terms. Well then, remember we're integrating from zero to two pi. So let's say we have a whole bunch of terms that looks something like c to the n. It could be anything up to, I guess we go up to the maximum of what, like 42? And, and also they can be negative, and also it could be zero, but let's just think about c to the n for a second. And with this definition right here, c to the n is gonna be the same thing as e minus nx. But then when you integrate this thing, what's gonna happen, you get e i nx, where n is an integer, by the way. And then what's gonna happen, let's see, we're gonna have like, the constant come out in the denominator evaluated from zero to two pi. Well, when you evaluate this, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have something like e i two pi n minus just e to the zero. But if you put this back into Euler's formula, this is one, e to the zero is one. So what's happening is the whole thing is just going to zero. So basically we're gonna have a whole bunch of terms going to zero, but we do have the one exception that we need to look out for and that's when this n value is zero. Because when n zero, this becomes one. Now when we expand it out, there's gonna be coefficients on it. So maybe I can write it like, okay, there's gonna be some constant up front, but we're just integrating one here. So when you do that, what you're gonna get is just the coefficient times x from zero to two pi, and you plug that in, you're gonna get two pi times this constant. So not everything's going to zero, and if you saw the last video, you'll know the answer wasn't zero. But this does simplify it a lot because what we can do is we just need to find the values where that exponent is going to be zero. And we only have to evaluate those and we can ignore all these other terms that are going to zero. So for the binomial theorem, we've got this formula up here to the right. So this is the same thing you're probably familiar with, like when you have x plus y cubed and you expand this out, what you're going to get is something like this. And I write it out this way the long way just to show how the expansion works. Each of these coefficients in front when you, like this here is gonna be a one, this here is gonna be a three, et cetera. But the thing I wanna notice is on the X and the Y, we've got every coefficient, right? We've got 
every coefficient from k equals zero to the n value, which is three here. So we got the three, the two, the one, which I should write there, and the zero. So the same thing is gonna happen over here with the z. We're gonna have a term like z to the 25th, and we're gonna have one that's z to the 24th, all the way down to z to the zero, which is just one. And the same thing is gonna happen over here with this. We're gonna have the one over z to the zero, and the one over z to the one, and that's all gonna go all the way down here to one over z to the 25th. But the good thing about it is we know exactly what this other piece is doing because we just have the z to the 17 and the one over z to the 17. So in order to get the value where our exponent's gonna be zero, here for z to the 17, if we multiplied one over z to the 17 times z to the 17, that's gonna be our constant value there. And then with this one, if we multiplied z to the 17 times one over z to the 17, that's gonna be our constant value here. Of course, in both cases, this from here, we're gonna be getting a coefficient with this piece right here. So now going ahead and using this formula, trying to find the two values we want that's gonna make the exponent zero, I actually wanna, let's, let's actually put it into this form because we have a little bit of a different situation here. So I'm actually gonna write this Let's actually write this in this way, z minus one over z to the n, but we know n is gonna be 25. So for this, we can make this 25 and make this 25. But then this over here, this is just gonna be z, and then this will make this minus one over z. But then what I can do is we can simplify this expression. This is gonna be z, 25 minus k, bring the minus out front, and then this is gonna be like z over k. But then we get the same base. I can write this as minus C 25 minus 2K. And so to get it where we get the coefficient to be zero, we're gonna want two values for this 25 minus 2K for this to work. We want this value to be 17. So solving this equation for K, we can just rearrange it. We get 2K equals 25 minus 17 or 2K equals eight or K equals four. So that's gonna be the first value we're gonna want when k equals four. And then for the other one, we want 25 minus 2k equal to minus 17, because when the exponent here is minus 17, you multiply it by this, again, adding exponents, you get zero in the exponent, and that's gonna be a constant. So solving this one, same way, so we're gonna have 2k equals 25 plus 17. This, this value is gonna be equal to 42, so our k value is gonna be equal to 21. And so these are gonna be the only two K values we wanna keep. Everything else, like we saw before, is gonna generate a zero because there's gonna be some Z to the N that's just gonna go away when we integrate it from zero to two pi, but these are gonna be constant values. So starting with K equal to four, we're gonna end up with 25, choose four. And now I'm noticing I should've been more careful with the sign here because if K is even, it just gets even out. So this is gonna here, this is gonna be like, minus one to the k right here. So k equals four, this is even, so we end up here, we're gonna have this becomes, so this is gonna become z17 times this right here, we're gonna have to keep this, this minus one over z17. And so this here is gonna evaluate to just minus one. And then for the next piece, when k equals 21, we're gonna have 25, choose 21. Now we're gonna get from this minus one over z to the 17 times z to the 17. Again, this is gonna be minus one. So let's see if I can go ahead and just simplify this and finish it off. So let's just look at this 25 choose four. It's actually gonna be the same thing as 25 choose 21, because when you write this in terms of factorials, this is gonna be the same thing as 25 factorial over 21 factorial times four factorial. And then this is just switched around, so it's the exact same thing. But then I can just expand this out and write it as 25 times 24 times 23 times 22 times 21 factorial. This is gonna cancel here. Four factorial is 24, so I can cancel these here. And so cleaning all this up, we just have two copies of it, but the negative, so it's just gonna be minus two times all this, 25 times 23 times 22 dx. Well, all this stuff is a constant, so I can bring this all out front. What I need to do with this will have minus two. I'm gonna break up the 22 and write it as two times 11 times 23 times 25. 
Then breaking this up, splitting it out, we're gonna have this two to the 26 times i to the 26. Then integrating, now we're just integrating one, so we get an x evaluated from zero to two pi. The zero is nothing, so we just need to plug in two pi. And from here, let me just clean up the board. Let me see if we can simplify this fraction. Okay, so here we've got a bunch of twos that I can all cancel up as so we've got two to the 26 here. So I can cancel three twos here with three twos here. Now this is gonna become two to the 23rd. Then multiplying out 11 times 23 times 25, I remember this from the last video, this is gonna be minus 6325 times pi over i to the 26. And then now we just need to clean up i to the 26. Well, i squared we know is minus one, so i to the fourth is just one. So you can take multiples like, if i to the fourth is one, if I take this to the sixth, this is still one here, right? But this over here is i to the 24th. So I can break this up as i to the 24th times i squared. And this piece goes away because it's just one. But then i squared, that's just negative one. And so we can cancel minus with minus here. And I did forget about, I was like, this is way off. We have, we have this two to the 23rd here. So this is a plus one times two to the 23rd. So for my final solution of this, we just get six, three, two, five pi over two to the 23rd. And that's it. Okay, there you go. Really nice method using the complex definition for sine. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.